Hello. In this video, we are going to examine illustrations of the wave functions of particles tunneling through classically forbidden regions. The general setup will be that region 1, which consists of the x-axis uh, from negative infinity up to 0, is region 1. The classically forbidden region 2 will go from x equals 0 to x equal L, and then back to a free particle region 3 on the right for x greater than or equal to L. In figure 1, the particle in question is an electron that has the average kinetic energy of a particle at 300 degrees Kelvin. The barrier has a width of 2 nanometers and the potential is 7.2 times 10 to the minus 21 joules. Table 1 summarizes important parameters for the wave functions that will be examined in this video. In particular, it gives the explicit form of the wave functions in the different regions, regions 1, 2, and 3. The wave functions of three different particles will be investigated in this video. The first wave functions will concern the electron. The second set will refer to a proton, otherwise known as H plus in chemistry. And finally, the alpha particle, He2+. Notice that the mass of the particle gets increasingly larger as we go from the electron to the proton to the alpha particle. Here we have an electron tunneling through a 2 nanometer barrier of magnitude 1 times 10 to the minus 20 joules. Note that the particle is traveling from left through the classically forbidden region shaded in gray through to the right. In figure 3, Again, we have an electron at 300 degrees Kelvin tunneling through a barrier 2 nanometers wide. Note that in this case, the potential is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 20 joules. By comparing with figures 1 and 2, we notice that for the same size barrier width, as we increase the potential, the likelihood of the particle tunneling through becomes smaller and smaller. In figure 4, the thermal electron is now tunneling through a barrier that has a width of 3 nanometers and a potential of 7.0 times 10 to the minus 21 joules. In this figure and succeeding figures, it allows us to compare the effect of the change in the width of the classically forbidden region on the likelihood that the particle will tunnel through the barrier. In figure five, we have the electron again tunneling through a barrier that is 3 nanometers wide against a potential of 1.0 times 10 to the minus 20 joules. In the next four figures, the tunneling particle will be a proton, H+, which is chemically relevant to bronsted lowry chemical reactions of an acid-base sort. Note in the figures, uh, the next four figures, that the tunneling barrier is smaller than in the case of the electron. Here, the barrier width is one angstrom, 
10 to the minus 10 meters. And also note that the potentials are smaller. In figure 6, the potential is 6 times 10 to the minus 21 joules. Here, our proton at 300 Kelvin is tunneling through a barrier one angstrom wide through a potential of 7 times 10 to the minus 21 joules. In figure 8, the proton is tunneling through a barrier of 1 angstrom through a potential of 8 times 10 to the minus 21 joules. We notice the small amplitude in region 3, which tells us that the likelihood of the particle tunneling through under these conditions is relatively small. In figure 9, the proton is tunneling through a barrier with a potential of 9 times 10 to the minus 21 joules. By comparison with the case for the electron, we notice that the proton is tunneling through a much thinner barrier against smaller potentials to have an equivalent likelihood of tunneling, thereby showing the effect of mass on the tunneling probability. In figure 10, we have our third and final particle, an alpha particle, attempting to tunnel through a barrier one angstrom wide through a potential of 7 times 10 to the minus 21 joules. And we can see by the small amplitude in region 3, the dark blue wave function, that under these conditions, the alpha particle has a very small probability of tunneling through, thereby showing that the increase in mass going from an electron to a proton to an alpha particle, seriously decreases the probability of tunneling. In conclusion, we display the equation to calculate the transmission probability for the particle to tunnel through the barrier which can be calculated as the ratio of the square of the modulus of the coefficient f to the square of the modulus of the coefficient a. The important quantities that determine the value of this particular ratio are the width of the barrier l and the constants big K and little k, which are involved in the wave function for regions 1 and region 3. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.